The Lord is risen. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia. Today is indeed a day of joy and salvation. For 40 days through the Lenten season, we prayed, fasted, gave alms, observed different devotions, and heeded the calls to repentance and forgiveness, culminating in the Holy Triduum, where Christ faced his passion, his death, and resurrection. Today we are filled with gladness because our sorrows are turned into joy, our worries are transformed into assurances, and our pains converted to strength. For the next 50 days, we will joyfully celebrate the Easter season until Pentecost Sunday. Today is Easter Sunday, the oldest and most important feast day in the church. It is the day we celebrate Christ's resurrection from the dead, marking the triumph of good over evil, sin, and death, and a proof that those who trust God and accept Christ will be raised from the dead. Easter is also called Pascha, deriving from the Greek translation of the Hebrew word Pesach, which means Passover. The Passover is the commemoration of Israel's deliverance from slavery in Egypt. As Easter is the celebration of Christ's deliverance of his followers from the slavery of sin and death into the promised kingdom of God. So, the Easter celebration takes over the Jewish feast of Passover, linking the Old Covenant with the New Testament. Hence, the Triduum is colored with readings from the Old Testament that celebrate God's deliverance of His people. For instance, the Exalted, that is the Easter proclamation, sings of the passing through the Red Sea, or the Paschal Lamb, and the Column of Fire, and Christ's work of wedding the heavenly glory with the earthly realm to bring us into perfect union with God. Today's readings, all from the New Testament, align with directing us to the proclamation of the good news of Christ's resurrection. In the first reading from Acts chapter 10 from verse 34 to 43, Peter went to the Cornelius' house, a Gentile who had sent for him after a vision of an angel. Although Peter would have been slow to accept this invitation, However, God ministered to him in a trance of the sheet of different animals lowered from heaven for him to eat, where God told him, What God has made clean, you must not call unclean. An indication of God's mission of salvation to the whole world and not just to the Jewish people. When Peter arrived at Cornelius' house filled with many non-Jews, he narrated to them in today's reading the story of Jesus, a man anointed by God as the Messiah, who went about doing good and healing, how he was eventually put to death. But God raised him on the third day and has been appearing to witnesses whom he has commanded to preach and to testify about him to everyone, so that those who believe in him will receive forgiveness of their sins through his name. While he was still preaching, the Holy Spirit came upon the entire household. But that is a subject for another day. The messages from this passage therefore are 1. Christ, who offered himself as the Paschal victim and was killed for our sake, is alive. He is risen from the dead and he has brought life and light to us all. Second, the good news of salvation that Christ has brought to the world is not selectively for a few, but for everybody, the whole of humanity. Hence, forgiveness is open to all who believe in Christ and repent from their evil ways. 
And finally, by receiving the good news. Like Peter, we are given the mandate to share the good news with others everywhere in the world. We are called to be evangelizers of the resurrection to humanity, messengers of peace and love to our communities, and ambassadors of Christ. The message of the second reading from Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 4 can be summarized in the phrase, Christ died my death and now I live his life. In the first two verses, Paul draws practical implications of what it means to be a Christian or a believer in the resurrection of Christ, using two verbs, to see and to think about the things that are high above. In Greek, the two verbs are zeteo and phroneo. Zeteo is usually translated as to seek. It implies pursuing something that one desires or aiming to achieve it. The second verb, phroneo, is usually translated as to think about or to set one's mind on something, which implies giving thought to the thing or having the thing close to one's heart. The object of these actions is described as ta-ano, that is, things that are high above. Thus, being a Christian or a resurrection believer in concrete terms implies pursuing or aiming to achieve and giving thought to or having close to one's heart the things that are high above. Paul provides a clarification of the adverb high above, ano, by qualifying it as where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. The things that are high above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, which should constitute the object of our pursuit and preoccupation, are contrasted with the things that are upon the earth. Thus, Paul says, not the things upon the earth, Meta Epites guess. What follows in verses 3 to 4 is introduced by the motive adverb gar, which can be translated in English as since for. It indicates a reason or provides an explanation of the preceding statement. Therefore, the reason why Christians are to pursue and set their mind on the things that are high above and not on the things that are upon the earth is that as believers in the resurrection of Christ, you have died with Christ and your life is hidden together with Christ in God. And at the time when Christ is manifested, your life will be manifested with him in glory. In other words, the course of the believer's life follows the course of Christ's life. A similar idea is expressed by Paul in his letter to the Galatians chapter 2 verses 19 to 20, where he says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. As such a life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In other words, Christ died my death and now I am living his life. The gospel today is from John chapter 20 verse 1 to 9 and it is the discovering of the empty tomb. The empty tomb, together with the subsequent appearances of Jesus after the resurrection, will become a story of joy and reason to believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Some points for reflection from the Gospel. The first point is the emphasis on the first day of the week when it was still dark. The Sabbath was the last day of the week. It was the day when God rested from all his work. If you read Genesis chapter 1, and God commanded his people to keep and observe the Sabbath day as a day of rest. If you read Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. The first day of the week is the day God began his work of creation. Jesus rising on the first day of the week opens a new chapter in salvation history. He is the beginning of the new creation. The second point is that it was still dark when Mary of Magdala went to the tomb. John emphasizes that only Mary of Magdala went to the tomb. The other Gospels tell us that there were other women with Mary Magdalene who went to the tomb. They had intended to go and anoint the body of their precious Lord, of Jesus, with spices. Obviously, the resurrection event was first attested to by women, not the disciples, the closest associates of Jesus. It is not those at the pinnacle of leadership in the church that are most enthusiastic about the faith. 
God may reveal himself to some lonely women who are genuinely seeking the face of God. The third point is that the women subject their discovery to the discernment and confirmation of the apostles' authority, especially of the head of the apostles, Peter. Peter was the first to go into the tomb to verify and confirm the resurrection. The other disciple ran faster than Peter, got to the tomb first, but waited for Peter to go right in first. The fourth point is that the body of Jesus was not there. The most excellent witness and testimony to the resurrection is the emptiness of the tomb. But the clothes were there, a sign that we shall not depart this world with material things at our resurrection. Worldly things will be left behind. And finally, although the body of Jesus was not there, the disciples could not immediately unravel the mystery of the resurrection. It was not until Jesus revealed himself to them that they understood and believed that he had risen as he had told them. The resurrection was not easy for the first disciples to comprehend. How easy is it for us today to believe in the resurrection? The resurrection should ignite an outburst of joy and celebration because Jesus has opened for us the way to our eternal home. Happy Easter. Have a grace-filled and wonderful celebration. God bless you. The Devar Adonai team thanks you for listening. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. To follow our reflections for Sundays and solemnities, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow our Facebook page, Devar Adonai, or visit our website, devaradonai.org.